What's up guys, CP Modi here back with another video and just about every day it seems I get another question from you guys asking me what the best backup solution is and what do I personally run. Is it Google Drive, OneDrive, Amazon Drive, Dropbox, what is the best option I get asked all the time. And up until recently I didn't exactly have a solid answer. But today we're taking a look at Backblaze, so far one of my favourite PC and Mac backup tools. Now for the sake of this video, no Backblaze is not in sponsorship or anything with the channel nor do I have any affiliation with them other than having to pay them the money each month for my account. Um, but yes, there is no affiliation between the CP Modder channel or Backblaze. Everything here is unfortunately me having to pay for it. Either way, let's take a look at Backblaze, what it offers, what it can do for you and whether or not I recommend it. Now currently I'm just running the personal backup option for five US dollars a month. However, I do have a server and other high capacity computers in the room uh, which will definitely benefit from something like the business plan so for me I'm still on personal as I was just giving it a go but I'm probably gonna step up because I do have a bit of data that I do need to back up from multiple server locations however today we're more focused on that personal option if you just want to back up your laptop or your desktop or heck even both is backblaze really that good of an option now for five US dollars a month a lot of people may not be expecting quite a lot as other companies like Dropbox OneDrive or even things like Google Drive cost a ton of money if you want to back up a lot of things. And Backblaze also too claims unlimited data, unlimited drives, unlimited backups, so you'd think there must be a catch somewhere. Well, so far I haven't exactly found that. Now for my desktop that I have sitting over there, which is what I use to edit all my videos and what this video will be edited on, and these screenshots will be taken from, uh, basically that thing has about 24 terabytes worth of drives hooked up to it. I've been able to connect them all up to Backblaze and they've been backing up no problems. Now don't get me wrong, they haven't fully finished backing up at this point and I've only got the most important files on there at the moment, but they're slowly going through and I haven't had any problems there. For the past about four Four weeks or about past month I've been backing up 24 hours a day seven days a week are uh, basically uploading constantly to backplays and I'm sure my ISP isn't thrilled that I'm uploading terabytes on terabytes per month but hey, that's why I pay my ISP to give me internet connections. Either way, they actually offer exactly what they say on their website. Again, even though I'm only on a personal plan, my 24 terabytes worth of drives are connected up, and so far they've happily taken nine terabytes, no problems in the past month, as my internet is only a 40 up connection, which isn't really too bad. Now, not all of us are gonna have 24 terabytes, and 24 terabytes is actually a fair amount of space, but at the end of the day, it is something that I have and they've been happy to back up no worries. Now, if we take a closer look, you may notice my Backblaze actual dashboard only says about nine terabytes. That's mainly because I wanted to get the most important drives backed up first. And also too, I haven't exactly filled 24 terabytes yet. So I've got about 20 of that 24 terabytes full, but most important files are going up first. But for most people, you should be able to back up your entire desktop, your entire laptop, whatever, on a decent internet connection in about 12 or so hours. Now do keep in mind that Backplay's backup service is a backup service, not a cloud drive. This basically means that Backplay's will only hold the data that you also to have. So if you're planning to basically buy an external drive, put everything on it, upload it to Backplay's, delete the drive, it's also to going to delete from Backblaze. Unlike Google Drive, Amazon Drive, or OneDrive, you can't just upload something and have it sit there because that's not how this service works. If you have it physically, it's gonna be backed up in the cloud. Once it's gone, about a week, two weeks, a month, however long you set it for, then it will also to be deleted. So unfortunately, if you're looking at Backblaze as a low cost cloud drive, that's not exactly how this service works. You will wanna look at another service, whether it be a hosting service or even something like Google Drive for this kind of function. However, with that being said, I personally wish there was something like Backblaze Drive where you could get some cloud storage to basically upload off your system and not need to actually have on a local copy. Sure, you can access your files from your phone, your tablet, laptops, anything like that once you log into the Backblaze storage, but 
Backblaze offers such a low cost as it is, I reckon 5-10 terabytes of cloud drive from Backblaze wouldn't be a too bad deal as an actual drive option that you could then network map to your computer and essentially have a 10 terabyte linked drive. But nevertheless, all in all, the actual pricing, the structure and what you get out of Backblaze isn't too bad for $5 a month. And it can be even less than $5 a month if you buy like multiple months or multiple years rather at a time, they give you an even better discount, but it isn't too bad at that. So with that being said, let's take a look at the UI and see how Backblaze works. Now taking a look at the PC screen, the Mac is basically the same except Mac themed instead of PC themes. Where you're tech savvy or completely a PC noob, Backblaze is a very simple and actually super powerful tool to use. So this is the dashboard and main screen. You get a basic backup info such as files being backed up, the amount remaining and the current file that's being backed up and that's basically it. Very, very simple. If you just want to quick look at what's going on, easy enough to work it out here. However, if we hit this settings button, damn, now we get into my favourite part of this dashboard. If we take a look down here, I did mention I have a ton of drives hooked up to my computer and at the moment I only have a few selected here. This is mainly because Backblaze and a lot of other backing up solutions will back up the smallest files first and then the largest files next. But for me, when I make videos here, the largest files are the most important and the smallest files are usually the least important. So for me, that 5 to 10 gigabyte size is usually what I would consider important, but Backblaze and other backup solutions would consider 5 and 10 terabytes a little bit bigger, so it would push it down the queue. So if you do start a backup and you want to make sure that your larger files are backed up first, do some tweaking here and there and you'll get that done. So for me, I've selected some of my drives, but in about sort of a few months time we should have all of my drives here hooked up and they should be all backed up, no worries. Then moving over to the next tab, we also do get some speed settings. Now this little speed dial here is useless. Completely ignore it. Don't even like look at it. It is completely useless. I don't even know what it's measuring because it is not the correct speed. Uh, for me, I have a 40 up connection and Backblaze absolutely saturates it. Whereas as we can see here, it is nowhere near 40 megabytes per second. So I'm not exactly sure what this thing is measuring, but it isn't really doing a good job. If you want to get an idea of what exactly is going in and out of your system, doing backups and stuff like that, grab yourself glass wire on the PC side and it actually really does a good job at visualizing what your system's doing. And we'll get into glass wire in just a moment, but grab it. I've left some links down below because glass wire is actually really, really handy. On top of this, we also do get things like throttling control or automatic throttling control and also to even the amount of threads to go with your internet speed. Now you do need to do some tests here, slow internet connections may not benefit from 20 threads running but for me with my 40 up connection I found that 20 threads running wasn't too bad and it gave me sort of the best performance. However if you have more solid uh, evidence than I do please let me know down in that comment section. The other tabs are basically as they are labelled with some good security features here and there but the thing that I really like out of all of this is the breakdown tab tab. It gives you an idea of exactly what the hell you're backing up and it is really, really awesome to see. Though with that being said, I would really wish they were in gigabytes and terabytes rather than just megabytes because as we can see in the video side, as I do a lot of videos, you know, making YouTube videos, uh, unfortunately it's like 9,000 megabytes, which is, uh, sorry, 9 million? 9, a lot of megabytes. Um, a bit hard to work out. So I would like to see, you know, 9,000 gigabytes or just 9 terabytes rather than 9 million, however many zeros there are there. It isn't exactly the world's best thing, but at the end of the day, you can still definitely get a nice visual representation of what is going on here. Now, I did mention just a moment ago to grab yourself GlassWire, and that is a super sweet tool to have. I reckon GlassWire and Backblaze go hand in hand. Now, we've already done videos in the past about GlassWire, and I do have a video coming up about the latest edition, but uh, GlassWire actually allows you to see how much you've backed up by application per application, and also too gives you a handy graph to look at to make sure your backups are are actually going through. But when it's transferring files in smaller ones, it's a bit harder to work out, but definitely when you get to backing up some larger files, you can easily see on the graph where it starts to work. Now that was the local side software. Really awesome, really simple, but also to a lot of different options. So let's jump on the website to see what we get over here. Now whether again you log in through your phone, your tablet, your laptop, anything like that, all of this is going to be available everywhere for you to access your files. And if you're worried about security, don't worry, Backblaze 
Wars also do has a ton of actual security options, which was really awesome to see. Once I log in, I can go ahead and actually see all my files right here, and it is really awesome. And the best thing, sort of like the cherry on top to all this, is you can actually choose to restore your files through a physical drive. So you pay $189 and they'll send you a real physical drive via courier to your house or to wherever you are with the files on it. And if you want your money back, just send that drive back with the return sticker on that and boom, you get your $189 back. For me, this is a really invaluable tool as Backblaze is generally your last sort of resort when it comes to backups. The best thing you want to do is have on-site backups, but if for some reason your on-site backups are destroyed, say fire, flood, so on and so forth, at least you have that backup option. Now the thing with that backup option is if say your house burns down, your office burns down, not all the time are we going to have super fast and super high bandwidth internet connections, meaning downloading terabytes on terabytes of data just isn't really an option. So going ahead and actually getting a physical drive shipped to you, for me, is an invaluable tool, especially living here in Australia where like no one has a decent internet connection, having the option to get a physical drive sent to me is something that I absolutely love. And I guess this can also to work with collaboration around the world. If you're working with someone who's overseas with a terrible internet connection, what you can do is upload your stuff to Backblaze and then get them to send out a drive to that address. Now sure, you could probably just get your own drive for cheaper, stick it in the mail for cheaper and all that kind of stuff, but it is still definitely an option you can do here. And again, the best part is if you want your money back, just send it back for a complete full refund. Really, really awesome. Honestly, I wish a lot more backup options actually had something like this where they'll send you a physical drive because honestly I absolutely love this but on the flip side I wish Backblaze would do a reverse of this I wish they would send you a blank drive load up whatever files you have send it back and they will load it straight into your account personally as I have a lot of terabytes of data it would have been cool just to get you know three or four of these uh, four terabyte drives and then just send them back to Backblaze for a full refund I totally would have done that but at the moment, they don't exactly have that, and I'm pretty sure as a personal account user, they don't expect you to be uploading like 20 terabytes plus worth of data. The rest of the web UI is also too pretty simple. If we take a look here, we see that we have the folder for my Edimax review on my local side, and then if we go ahead and go over to the Backblaze side, we also to see the AC2100 router review, and boom, it's right here. I can access all the video files in there, I can download them, all that good stuff. Really, really awesome. And one final thing that I did want to note if you are uploading a lot of small files is there will be processing times. Whilst Backblaze doesn't necessarily advertise this, every file you upload does need some level of processing to obviously optimize it for the storage and ease of download and that kind of stuff. Rather than just dumping it anywhere on their servers, their systems do need to optimize it to different locations of their drives. So for me, when I first started my very first upload, I had about 100,000 really tiny files from basic text documents, Word documents, small picture files, game saves and that kind of stuff, they were all relatively small files and about a hundred thousand of them. For the first 24 hours of my uploading, that hundred thousand or so went through just fine. However, after that 24 hours, the speed was drastically reduced as their processing well needed to process up all those tiny little files. About 12 or so hours later, it was perfectly fine and back up at full speed. However, with that being said, if you are doing your first backup and you do have a ton of little tiny files, do leave them some processing time as they're not exactly going to be real-time one-for-one putting that on their server. So if your upload slows down and you know your internet connection is faster than what you're getting, give them about 24 to 48 hours. Otherwise, contact their support, which is actually super handy to have and are really nice to get in touch with. All in all, for about five US dollars a month and even less if you buy the full year in one go, I think this is an invaluable tool, whether you're a content creator or just someone who wants their data safe. With the ability to access your file from wherever you are and even get your files that have been lost or damaged back on a physical drive is really something that I can really appreciate living here in Australia with a really bad internet connection to a lot of buildings here. The option to restore with that physical drive again is really super sweet and the fact that they don't throttle you even if you have massive uploads is another really awesome thing. And as of recording today, I've uploaded about six terabytes of data out of my nine terabytes that I've got set so far out of the full 24 terabytes 
months or so that I have to upload, there's definitely a lot of data that I'm sending up and I've seen no performance hit other than the first time I started uploading and they needed to start processing, but overall it's been a very painless experience. Their technical support was definitely really on point and was able to answer my questions like that super super handy people over there but overall I really strongly recommend Backblaze as a good backup solution for your personal or business needs. But let me know down in that comment section what do you use for off-site backups? Do you have one? Do you use a custom server solution or do you use something like Backblaze to back up all your files? Do let me know down below. Otherwise I've left some links down in that description box if you want to go ahead and check out Backblaze. Otherwise guys thanks all for watching and I will catch you all in the next one. Oh, <laughs>